Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. Really glad that you've joined me. And for our Daily Word, we're going into the Gospel of Matthew chapter 21. I want to share verses 4 and 5 with you, and then let's talk just for a few minutes today about the humility of our Lord. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, Tell the people of Jerusalem, Look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. So we have lots of symbolism in the, uh, the victorious entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, the, the Palm Sunday, Sunday um, procession. Uh, first of all, uh, symbolic, just this procession is symbolic of the king coming into Jerusalem. This is the triumphal entry of a king. It's rich with symbolism. The palms are symbols of victory and, and so uh, the donkey, though, also, which we're kind of focusing on today, the donkey is also very highly symbolic. It is really more symbolic as, as the, the animal that the king would ride on. It's symbolic more of, of a reign of peace, whereas the, the horse would be more symbolic of, of war. And, and it's also there uh, a symbol of humility. Um, and so we see a, a symbol of the king and a humble king, especially the, uh, the sim symbolism of the king of Israel is connected with King David. Um, David is, is near his, his death, and uh, the scriptures talk about how the, the succession was disputed. And the way that Solomon is secured on the throne is that he, he actually rides into Jerusalem on David's donkey, right? And so this is symbolic of the king of Israel. It's symbolic of, of humility and of reigning in humility and in peace. Um, I, I wanna share just a, a portion of Isaiah chapter 11 with you because uh, just as him riding on the donkey is fulfillment of prophecy, the, the symbolism, if we trace this through, is, is pointing to the prophecy that will be fulfilled at the return of Christ and his, his reign uh, over all of creation. This is from Isaiah chapter 11, beginning in verse 1. Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot, yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. And the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. If we scroll forward here just a bit, it says in verse 6, In that day, the wolf and the lamb will live together. The leopard will lie down with the baby goat. The calf and the yearling will be safe with the lion. And a little child will lead them all. The cow will graze near the bear. The cub and the calf will lie down together. The lion will eat hay like a cow. The baby will play safely near the hole of a cobra. Yes, a little child will put its hand in a nest of deadly snakes without harm. Nothing will hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For as the waters fill the sea, so the earth will be filled with people who know the Lord. So it's pointing forward to this peaceful reign of Jesus Christ as he returns, makes all things new. Heaven and earth are one, and all of creation is freed from the curse of sin and uh, of death. Now, humility, as we see it here in Jesus, um, we, we must keep in mind as we're thinking about our embodiment of humility that, that obviously, Humility is not about um, denying our value, our worth before God. It's not about self-degradation. It's not about saying, I, I have no gifts, I'm not worth anything. It's not any of that. It's, it's really just about getting the focus off of ourselves. It's, it's about no longer making life about ourselves, our comfort, our satisfaction, our glorification. It's making our lives about loving God and loving people, making our lives about living for the glory of God, showing how good he is, sharing the gospel with people. It's 
you know, it's striking to hear king and humble in the same breath because we know that, that uh, lots of times with us uh, flawed human beings, authority, power actually um, fills, fills us with pride and arrogance and, and so forth. Um, but uh, th this one, our king, the king of kings, he is focused on us. He, he is the one who is all powerful, the one through whom all things were made. And, and yet as he comes, he comes not as one who is, is seeking to be served, but he comes among us to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And, and so I, I think the question before us all then is how in the world could we live a life of pride that is focused on, on ourselves and, and yet see Christ on the cross crucified for us, what he did for us, and, and also having in mind what is to come, that, that what he has done for us on the cross has opened life for us in his kingdom, that he, he, he will reign over us. We will delight uh, under the king forever. And, and so we are freed up then to focus not on ourselves, but on him, our true king, the lover of our souls, our savior, and not on ourselves, and, and, and focus on the, the people that God puts into our lives that, that we're actually here for them. We're here for them to serve them and love them and, and, and to, to share the gospel with them. And, and friends, may it be so as we see Jesus on that donkey in our mind's eye, as we see him on the cross, that we would live lives that, that are not focused on ourselves, but on him and on others in the love of Jesus. Amen. Amen.